we now have the truck moving forward. Of course, a real truck would not go from stationary to full speed in an instant. It would accelerate up to speed gradually from a standstill. To simulate this, we have added extra keyframes at regular 0.2 second intervals and then spread them along the timeline so as to control the acceleration of the truck from stationary. The problem is now that we have carried out these edits, the animation starts far too early. The truck is not meant to move until the playtime has reached 4 seconds. We can remedy this by group selecting the keys and moving them down the timeline en masse. Holding down the left mouse button and dragging allows us to group select keys. Once selected they are highlighted in a lighter blue colour. Now we can move them back to roughly the correct position. Finally, selecting the start key you can zoom in and place it at precisely the 4 second mark. The truck has some secondary animation to make the wheels rotate. This rotation is derived from a RenderWare animation file that was created in 3D Studio Max and exported as an ANM file. We can verify this by opening the truck folder in the assets window. We can see the two truck assets, the model itself, truck.dff, and its animation file, truck.anm. If we open the previewer in the workspace by selecting the preview tab, we can drag and drop the DFF into this. By then dropping the ANM file into the previewer, we can view the animation of the wheels turning. This is fine, except the wheels revolve at a constant rate. The truck, however, is stationary for the first 4 seconds, and then gradually accelerates over a period of time, and then travels at a constant speed. The rotation of the wheels needs to match this motion in order to look correct. We can use the sequencer to achieve this. We'll return to the design view and then select the truck entity in the sequencer. We are now going to add a second parameter for animating. Right click on the entity and select properties from the menu. The parameter we need to access now is the animation rate. We check this parameter to select it and click OK. You can see that a second animation track is created in the sequencer along with the name of the parameter it represents. Double clicking on the animation rate opens the edit dialog box. This time we want to keyframe the animation rate attribute, so we will select the attribute control editor option from the keyframe editor menu. As we did with the other track, we will first create an anchor key at the beginning of the sequence. We move the playhead to the start and click create keyframe. This time we need to specify a value for the animation rate. Selecting the keyframe tab in the editor will allow us to set a value for the speed of the wheel rotation. Until the truck moves off, the wheels are stationary, so the rate of the first frame needs to have a value of zero. Values can be set by either moving the slider, or by simply entering a value in the box above. By setting a value of zero, we will prevent the wheels from rotating. Next, we set the playhead to 4 seconds and create a second keyframe also with a value of zero. This is where the truck starts to roll forward, and the wheels should start to rotate. Holding down the control key, drag the playhead toward the last keyframe of the truck's acceleration. You will notice that it now snaps from frame to frame instead of moving smoothly. This useful function enables you to accurately align the playhead to the keyframe's position in time. Right click on the animation rate bar and select create keyframe from the menu. This is a quick way of creating keyframes without the need to open the animation edit box. Set the value to 1.0. This will make the animation play at its original rate. Now we need to interpolate between the two values. Right click on the rate bar again, somewhere between the second and third keyframes. This time, from the interpolator option in the menu, select linear interpolator. Again, this is a handy way to set interpolation without the need to resort to the edit dialog box. The wheel rotation is now fully under the control of the sequencer and will continue until we tell it to stop. Next we set the current time to 20 seconds and create another keyframe with no interpolation. We set its value to 0. The wheels will now stop rotating at this point. Again, when we scrub the playhead across this frame, we can see the value changing in the right hand pane. At this point, save your sequence. 
Next we need to be able to view our animation on the target to check it's doing exactly what we want. We need to compile the data and stream it to our viewer. The next tutorial will explain how to do this.